today, I really, really hope that we get to take advantage of all the time that we have with Brittany because she has been willing to kind of let us peel back the curtain and see what functional wellness really looks like. So Brittany is one of my clients who I have been able to work with and be able to take her from point A to point B, and we're still in progress on some things. So um, we're going to really dive into her story and you be able to see how it is that we kind of go through this functional wellness paradigm and what it really is and what it means. So I'm Shelly Tyler. Um, for over 14 years, I have been caring for people in some capacity, um, especially women's health. And over the years, what I saw in my practice is that I know that there were deeper rooted issues that women were dealing with than I was actually addressing with them. So over time, as I would have multiple women come into my office and sit in the corner and just break down in tears, I'm like, we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to figure out what's really going on. And a lot of the times, these were Christian women. They, they had faith. They had perseverance. They had endurance. And they were like, something's wrong with me and nobody knows what it is. And I am losing hope. I'm losing faith. I'm losing energy. I'm losing purpose. And I'm like, okay, well, that is not where God wants you to be. Um, and so what, what God did was a work in me, honestly, and shifted my entire career towards just helping Christian women figure out their root cause issues of what's going on with them. And I find great joy in that um, every day that I get to present information from a science based and Bible backed perspective um, and be able to help people dig into some of the root causes that could be actually contributing to some of the things that you're feeling. So I have I have three kids. My husband, John Marks, a chiropractor. We live on a farm, hence where the pharmacy comes from, because I really think that um, some of the root cause issues that a lot of us women deal with today are because of all the things that society has added onto our plates. So getting back to the farm for me, it really does um, hit a lot of these root cause issues. So we're, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Um, but the pharmacy itself, when I say what, like what I'm doing day in and day out is I am supporting you when you are struggling with chronic symptoms. I am partnering with you to have sustainable nutrition based mind body strategies for those underlying root causes so that you can optimize your health and thrive and do the things that God created you to do. And we do that by combining science and faith. So we have to look at the whole person perspective when we think about wellness in general. Um, we think about the brain. We know the brain's in charge. We know that all of these things are influencing it. Your genetics, estrogen, your lifestyle, amino acids, bacteria, stressors, like all these things are impacting your brain and impacting your health. But one of the things that I seek to do is to wrap that brain in the love of Jesus <laughs> along the way, um, encourage you spiritually and emotionally um, and support you in that way, in a way that you can relate to. But that is also Bible based because there's so many things that when we go back to how our brain functions and how our body functions and how we best respond, it is in the presence of the Lord. And that is why I feel like over and over again, if we can take a step back and truly take on a biblical perspective and truly come into the presence of the Lord and know him and seek him, there are so many of these things such as sleep, 
gratitude, um, your parasympathetic nervous system that do become engaged automatically. Your cortisol goes down. Things happen in our body. And I, I truly believe that's because that's the way we're designed. So I got kind of sick of people trying to compartmentalize <laughs> things with people. And then I got kind of sick of like, people giving good holistic advice, but it just got kind of weird uh, or really new agey or I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. So that's why I do it the way that I do it is because I want our science and our theology to not be conflicting, but to line up with one another. And we can stand in that tension on some places and then we can dive in and just really see what God says about your health and your body. When I just look at a functional wellness perspective, this is how I view it. Um, Conventional medicine has a disease model like we look at hormones, we look at your emotions, we look at pain, your neurology, we look at inflammation, we say you have Hashimoto's, you have fertility issues, you have allergies. Um, and what I'm looking at is the, kind of the, the roots, the things that make the tree grow. <laughs> so environmental stressors food without nutrients, GMOs, pesticides, emotional stressors, medications, trauma, chemicals, infections. My roots can go really broad and really deep because there are so many things below the soil that are causing the disease to happen. So when I say root cause issues, I don't really necessarily cling to your diagnosis. I'm always saying, why, like, why did that happen? Why did that diagnosis happen? You don't just wake up with Hashimoto's one day. Your genetics don't just say you have Hashimoto's. There was something that happened below the soil over a period of time. And it's never one thing. <laughs> it's never one thing. There are multiple things that have happened that have led to the disease. And the part of the story that stinks for people is that we just try to treat the disease. Like we just try to like put a band aid over the Hashimoto's, but we never really treat the root causes of what happened. Um, and that's, that's my perspective. And that's why I do it this way. Because if you have noticed by now, <laughs> Um, yes, Lori, there will be a replay. Um, you can definitely continue to listen. If you haven't noticed by now, when you start to put a Band-Aid over one disease, you'll start noticing you have other things pop up, like things will continue to present in other ways. And then you have this random conglomerate of symptoms and somebody says, nothing's wrong with you or this is wrong with you, but we don't know what to do with you. Try this. And you still don't feel good <laughs> um, over a period of time. So I look at health in general as a continuum. So a lot of people that I'm talking with are in this like one, two, three, like poor health, starting to lose function, have symptoms, um, but they're they're heading towards disease. Um a lot of the population is kind of in this comfort zone, neutral, no symptoms. They might eat pretty good, exercise pretty good, um, and they're just kind of coasting. And when you're there, you can either go one way or the other. Over time, something's going to happen. Like you, you can't just stay in the comfort zone forever because your body changes, especially as women. We are not stagnant homeostatic beings if you notice we have a cycle and we change and our hormones change throughout the lifespan and we have natural changes throughout our body so if you're in that comfort zone what you do day in and day out and the decisions you make are either going to lead you towards optimal wellness or disease 
Uh, and that is just the truth of the matter that 1% is going to lead you somewhere over time. And it can be super, super sneaky. Um, so just think for a minute, like if you were to break yourself on that illness wellness continuum, like where am I on that right now? Where would you say I am? And then where would you want to be? Because I'm not really happy or content like moving people from like a three to a four. Like I want to move people from like a three to an eight. Like we want wellness. That's the point. That's why I don't call this functional medicine really, but I call it functional wellness because we are changing the root causes so you can feel better than you did before or better than you feel like you even knew you could. Um, so I've, I've lived it. I've been all over this continuum over a period of time. Um, so I can definitely relate. And there's always room for improvement. But it's good to know where you are and where you want to be. Then I also want you to understand that when we look at that, we can use the illustration of the roots of a tree or a spider web because there's so many factors that are going into deciding where you are on that continuum. I mean, Brittany's going to tell you, like, there's a lot of things that fold into this. And in order to truly fix it or improve where you are on that paradigm, we have to look at the whole spider web, like, and we have to see how these things connect together and influence the other thing. And we're going to go through some labs today of Brittany's, and I am not sharing all of her labs with you, or we would be here for a very long time. Um, because when I get labs back, I'm getting hundreds 100 plus pages of stuff that I'm going through and I'm connecting the dots between what I'm seeing. So we're I'm just going to connect a few dots for you today in her story so you can kind of get an idea for why I do what I do and how I do it. So Brittany, this is Brittany Hughes. I want you to just introduce yourself and tell a little bit of your story. Yeah. So Brittany, um, can everyone hear me? I just want to make sure. Okay, perfect. So my story, my health journey story would kind of start back in 2018. I was in college. I was a very active individual. Um, I was working out twice a day, eating relatively healthy. Um, and then all of a sudden, I get a call from my gynecologist that tells me that my labs and testing came back abnormal and in a concerning way. Um, ended up being that I not only had precancerous but cancerous cells of my cervix. And I was like, where is this coming from? I didn't really know at that point in time like what to do. I was just listening to my doctor. I went through a procedure, had that taken care of. And over the course of the next three years, was able to have consistent, normal testing come back for that specific thing. Um, and I continue to monitor it. But within those three years, I started to develop a lot of other symptoms. Um, back in July of 2020, um, I went on a trip with some friends on a float trip. And two days after when we got back, I broke out in this full body rash. And I was just like, what's going on? Went to the doctor and they were like, well, you probably just had some bacteria or something that didn't sit well that got onto your skin. Let's give you a steroid shot. And they also wanted to do blood work just because I hadn't had blood work done in a couple of years. And when I got my blood work back and testing came back positive. ANA testing being something that is in your body that it takes if you have some form of autoimmune disease. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird. Um, so they sent me to a rheumatologist who specializes in going a little bit deeper. Um, wasn't able to get in until November that year. Um, and when I went to them, they were very off putting this doctor saw me saw that I was relatively healthy from the outside 
saw that my joints were just very mobile. I told him about some symptoms of joint pain that I was experiencing and um, I was always getting so tired and I have a family history of autoimmune diseases. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we ruled those out because from my medical background, I knew that those certain things can be hereditary. And this doctor just was not taking me seriously. It was like, you're just stressed because you're a new college grad, new work, you're joint hurt because you're overly mobile, but I guess we'll run some things, but I know nothing's wrong with you my tests come back and they are not normal. They are within some form of normal realm, but they are not consistent with each other. And the doctor was just like, well, I, there's nothing I can do on my part. Go back to your doctor and then see what they want to say, but there's nothing that I need to do here. And I was like, okay. So went back, um, just had a follow up and we were just going to see what happened that following July went back on another float trip, different area and the same thing happened. And I broke out in this body rash. And I was like, this is weird. Went back to my doctor, got a steroid shot, had further blood work done. And my thyroid levels are kind of weird. And they're like, well, that rheumatologist said the thyroid can cause that positive ANA. Let's go back and let's see an endocrinologist now went to an endocrinologist and he was like, oh yeah, I can see your, your thyroid. It's very large, which freaked me out because I also have family history of thyroid cancer. So they did an ultrasound and they were like, Meh, nothing, nothing seems to be wrong. Your thyroid levels, they're kind of on the low side, but they're within that normal range. So we don't really need to follow up with you. And I was like, okay, well, that didn't really give me answers, but I was kind of content knowing that it wasn't thyroid cancer. All my other tests were like relatively normal. And my general practitioner was like, well, sometimes people can have positive ANAs and it's just, it just comes back like that because of something else. And that's not a real concern. Um, so then I was uh, back in January of 2022, was in a hot tub hanging out two days later. I mean, full body rash. It wasn't just on my face and my neck. It was all the way down into my legs. And I was like, okay, so it's not just this river or different rivers causing it. Something else is going on and we can't figure it out. But I just let it go because I didn't really know what was going on and no one could seem to tell me what was going on. Um, at this time, I was also working with Shelly and kind of talking with her just on a friend coworker level. Um, I was taking some of her classes that she used to teach and just kind of brainstorming some ideas. So I was developing a more um, body awareness and I was developing more um, of, I wanted to take control over my health. So I went to my gynecologist for my yearly checkup and I was telling her, I have gained so much weight over the past year. Nothing has changed. I'm working out. I'm eating healthy. I cannot lose weight. I seem to be gradually gaining it. I have no libido. I am 20, 26 years old, old then. 26 years old. I have no libido. I don't know what's going on. I have hair in my body. Just touching my skin hurts. And she was like, okay, well, let's see. We'll run some blood work. They blood work, did thyroid testing. And during that period, I got another abnormal pap in my back, which means that those cervical cancer cells were developing. Um, come to find out, they assumed that they knew what was going on. And when they did further testing, that was not actually what was going on. And I was so heartbroken because they generalized me as 85% of this is caused by this. So we're just going to assume that where in reality, I fell under that 15%. And so when I followed up for my biopsy, I was like, okay, what can we do? Can we test my hormones? Can we do this? And they're like, nah, hormones don't really tell us anything. Like you're, you're young, you're overall healthy. And I was like, I'm telling you all of this, like, what can I do? And she was like, well, let's send you to an endocrinologist, which I had already been to. And I think you just need to really lose weight. And for reference, I was 186 pounds, five foot six. That is 
normal on that scale. And I was just done. I was like, how dare you say that that was the cause of it? I have already been to an endocrinologist and luckily I had already been talking with Shelly. I knew that she was going in um, and starting this program. And I was like, I need to set up a meeting with her. And it has been the best decision um, that I have ever made for myself, um, specifically with my health. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of my symptoms as we go along, but that's generally how I had to get myself to this point. Um, all of those doctors and I found nothing out and I have found so much more life altering changes that I can carry on even after I'm done working with Shelly, um, that will help me maintain everything that I have progressed so far. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I just, I love hearing that story just because I hear this, I hear the same sort of story from a lot of women. So that's, I was like, Brit Brittany needs to tell her story because it, it comes to a point after you do all this, you feel hopeless. Um, and like, there's not another option. So I'm, I'm hoping as we move through this and people see some of the changes that there's some hope restored. Um, what Brittany just walked you through is like a timeline of events of like the last, you know, six years. Um, and I go in depth with this information and we talk about stressful events traumatic triggers and how your symptoms progressed. So she didn't talk about her whole life. <laughs> yeah. At, you know, I was like, let, let's not start from the beginning, beginning, but <laughs> you know, there are things that happen to us when we're babies or even in your utero that we have no control over. There are traumas, there are stressors, there are things that happen. And one of the exercises that I really have people do are, are go back and reflect what are all these things that happened and when did your symptoms start and align with those things? And first of all, you just have to realize we all have stuff. <laughs> we all have trauma. We all have triggers. Um, and that's okay. I think the part that is so enlightening is when you see it on paper and you realize that your symptoms align with some of the life circumstances that you have or have had, and it brings meaning to them and it brings direction too. So we spend a lot of time digging into this because, like I said, I'm not just giving you like a supplement and saying good luck. We're talking mind, body and spirit. So we have to understand the full person and all of these things that are impacting your overall health. So that's what she went through whenever she first came to me, um, I had her do that timeline a little bit more in depth. Um, I had her fill out a medical symptoms questionnaire. This is just like one section of it, but it's a lot of sections and we kind of get this grand total score at the end. It's something that I use to remeasure progress every month as we're going through um, our treatments and our plans. And she came to me with 101. Uh, that's really high. <laughs> that means like all like she has something marked in all systems of her body. Like there is something going on in every system of her body, especially for her age and how how healthy her lifestyle decisions were at that point. That is a super, super high number. So that's that's where we start. And we're like, OK, every month we want to see that <laughs> that number go down. Um, and now, well, January, um, we had, I mean, we're already down to 35. Like that is fantastic. That's yeah. definitely something to celebrate. So I look at that and I look at all of her intake paperwork. Um, and then what I do is I, I start to compartmentalize all these different things that happen and put them into all these different categories. Like where is her body really struggling? Like um, 
some of these words may not mean a lot to you, like communication and transport, defense and repair. But everybody knows energy. Um, everybody knows elimination, um, spiritual, emotional, mental, all of these things that could be impacting all these different areas. And I lay all that out so that I can get a good bird's eye view for what's going on. And then we we start treatment um, with Brittany. Why don't you go ahead and tell them, like, before we got your labs back, when we started doing some changes with your diet, what was that like for you? Um, so... We started with the elimination diet to try to see if there was anything in my diet that was specifically causing any of my symptoms. So symptoms including I would always get bloated after I was eating. Um, I would have a sharp pain like right under my breastbone, like in the top of my stomach um, and very bad menstrual cycles. I did have I was on birth control, took myself off. And so like my body was still regulating um, with that. But um, I moved, my mood swings are terrible. I had chronic anxiety. My depression was getting worse all the time. Um, brain fog that I just kind of assumed was COVID fog um, and stuff like that. So when I started doing this, it was about 30 days. And then we started implementing things back little by little. And then I monitored my symptom control. And the first thing that I noticed off the bat was I had so much more energy on a day to day basis. I actually was able to start losing weight. I did not start exercising during this time because I was still having so much joint pain. Um, but I was actually losing weight, which was not my ultimate goal. But it was something I hadn't been able to do for the past three years. Um, and I wasn't bloating after I was eating anymore. My bowel movements were more often and more consistent. Um, that's something that we kind of track um, just to make sure that it's flowing properly. Um, and those are just things that started before any of the testing, any of the supplements, any of that stuff started coming along. Yeah, so like right off the bat, I expect there to be a huge drop in that that medical symptoms questionnaire that I talked about before we even start really digging into like the specifics and the weeds that we're going to get into now, because we're going to figure out a lot about your elimination system, like how you get rid of toxins. We're going to find out a lot about food sensitivities. Um, we're going to find out through that process. I love using the elimination diet because it's such a mindful process. It's different than me telling you like, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this. It's like, let's take these things out and then you add it back in and you tell me how you feel. And then do you think you should continue that? Because I guarantee you, once those 23 days are over and people's cells turn over and you don't have that yucky feeling and then you add something back in that does give you the yucky feeling, you're like, uh, no, no, <laughs> like I, that's a no for right now. It's not a no forever. But while we're healing, because mm -hmm. now we're getting the labs back, we know what we need to heal and that deep root cause. While we're healing, we need to keep those things away that are aggravating you and causing inflammation and, and oxidative stress because we, we need them out of the picture so we can take care of this stuff. So um, we, we, I'm going to go through a series of tests and connect some dots with you. But we started with the gut. I always start with the gut, <laughs> the gut and the gut brain connection. So, you know, talking about some of those stressors, triggers, traumas, and your actual intestinal permeability, the bacteria that's in there and how it is responding. What I, this is one part of it. And what I take away from this right away when I look at it, um, green is good. Uh, yellow means it's starting to move into the bad and red means like that bacteria is out of control and it's causing problems with Brittany specifically. When I got this, I was like, praise the Lord. There we have an explanation 
for some joint pain right there. Because specifically, Citrobacter in, in that quantity is highly related with some rheumatoid arthritic symptoms. So that inflammation aggravation, and I'm like, we need to get that stuff out of there because that's going to make a really huge change. And this is where we start to see the dysbiosis. Like these are starting to move into that troublesome uh, red zone. We want to try to get those back in order. And then we look at the green ones. In order for the bad ones to get back in balance, the green ones have to come up. So we're kind of doing this like seesaw here with your bacteria. So you see you have some like low numbers here and some no growth here. And we're going to come back and connect that with some other 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 spots here. Specifically, when we look down in the test a little bit further, we see that there were some yeast. So candida is present. And if you haven't learned about candida, that could be a whole nother hour. But I do have some talks on that in the Facebook group and on YouTube about candida and all the havoc that it can wreck. But mood brain fog, <laughs> digestive issues, all like a lot of depression, a lot of the things that she mentioned, candida can be very much a culprit. And the interesting thing about it is that if we look at the first lo low growth of those bacteria, lactobacillus is barely there at all. And it has to be there in order to keep candida in check. Candida is a normal gut flora, but what it is, is if it's in your stool, then it is like way up there out of control. So we need lactobacillus to come up to try to even that out. We need to dampen the candida a bit and we need to get that stuff out of there along with the citrobacter. Um, the other part of this that is always interesting is the rare vegetable fibers. It's like, well, there's, there's a rare amount in there. And to me, this connects with that gut brain connection. When we're stressed, we're often very busy and we like sit down and eat really, really fast or we eat on the run or we eat in our car and we don't chew our food, which is the beginning of digestion. So your saliva actually has digestive enzymes that break down the food and begin the digestion process before you even get it to your stomach. So when we're eating really fast, and this is the stool, if there's vegetable fibers in your stool, and I'm not seeing some other things come up, I can be like, okay, how are we eating? How are we eating? Are we eating mindfully? <laughs> or are we eating like rushed? And that can be a, a just a small lifestyle change that can make a big difference. Like, let's try chewing your food, actually. <laughs> um, let's try not eating in front of your computer. Let's try um, making sure you're sitting down while you're eating because we, we know your food's not being completely digested, which causes inflammation. Uh, when we move on, we get some more information about the immune system with with the gut lining. Um, as you can see here, her secretory IgA is elevated. Um, immune system says we are angry, <laughs> um, we are inflamed, and we're struggling. If we look on down further, we see her pH um, is on the lower side. So if we think back to chemistry class, that's going to be more basic. Um, or that's going to be on, on like that lower side of acidic. But we want it to be even more acidic than that. We want it to be like a four when, when we pull in some of her genetic components. I'm not going to get into that a whole lot, but that matters when it comes to digestion of the food in the stomach and how it's moving down the track. And if you're not digesting your food properly, you're going to actually cause inflammation, aggravation of your whole digestive tract. So citrobacters um, was one of those that's like, okay, joint pain is a huge issue because it's keeping her from exercising. Like, I need her to exercise. 
like movement is huge. So um, this test was able to actually culture out that bacteria and tell us what would be beneficial for her from a supplementation standpoint to take. So we know that she's going to really, really um, have a good response if I give her something with Uva Ursi in it. So I gave her some GI Microbics by Designs for Health and um, combine that with some anti-candida um, supplements. And when I say her joint pain has improved, like this is a, a main reason right here. How do you think your joints are doing now, Brittany? Yeah, they're, they're so much better. I actually was able to talk to Shelly about, so I am a physical therapist assistant, so I'm always moving and using my hands and doing stuff. And that was one of my biggest concerns. I was like, I'm not going to be able to treat more without my body giving out on me um, and mainly my hands. And I have now signed up for PT school to get my, because my joint pain is very minimal. I would say my joint pain is only because of the things I do now versus the actual inflammation in my body. And so now I'm able to continue doing what I love, what I went to school for, because I'm very rarely ever having any of this pain, which is great. I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, at 26, you were questioning like the longevity in your career. Um, and now you're going back to get your doctorate. And like, that is it. I mean, to, for me, I'm like, that is huge. That's a huge mm -hmm. shift and a huge mindset shift too. Like what, when, before it was the scarcity mentality, like what can I get by with doing without mm -hmm. really hurting? And now it's like this abundance of like, Lord, what can I do? Like, mm -hmm. what do you, what, what do you want me to do? Um, yeah, and, and having that vision. Fear. And that fear just creeps into your mind because one, you don't know what's going on. You don't know why your body's breaking down. And when you have loved ones that are suffering with joint pain at an older age, you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be me. But in my thirties and my forties, like how, how am I supposed to survive? How am I supposed to do anything else? Um, and this is me before children. Like, <laughs> you know, that's a whole nother thing. Like um, I know a lot of, women have the children you you just have to have to deal with it because that's what we're kind of taught like oh well here you go take this take that hopefully it gets better yeah yeah um the next test we're going to look at is an organic acid test and this it's a pretty lengthy test i'm just picking out this one part because what i circled here it shows me in the urine now that there is gut dysbiosis, these markers tell me that the bacteria is out of balance um, and that there is candida present. And confirmation is just key for me. Um, I never want to guess. I never want to guess and be like, well, you might have candida. No, like I want to know and I want to know the severity because this matters to me. If it's in your urine and it's in your stool, okay, I can like we need to we need to get that stuff out of there. We need to change your diet. We need to really watch those sugars because Candida loves to eat on some sugar and make sure that we change that good bacteria so that you can actually improve. Um, this test also looks at energy hangups. So when this is the Krebs cycle, <laughs> um, I talked about it last week in one of my Facebook lives, but it, when you look at it, you're kind of like, ah, but what it really does is it tells me when you eat, how you get energy from your food and how you break those things down and what you need in that cycle to be able to get the energy out of it that you need. This shows me where the hangups are, like where are there some issues in that energy cycle? And when she said she had like energy fatigue issues, this gets pretty important to me to start to roll into the piece of the puzzle. How do you feel like your energy is now, Brittany? 
my energy levels have been improving all the time um it's definitely like this is not a linear progress like life happens so like there's been times where i've not been the best at taking certain supplements or not sitting down while i eat or not doing the things because i mean life happens that's just what what occurs but um overall like my energy levels like I don't feel like I have to take a nap every day. There's days where three o'clock rolls around and I'm like, oh, no, I'm I'm out. Um, but overall, just being able to enjoy like throughout the week more time. I don't feel like I'm just sluggish throughout the day either. Um, and knowing like why I might be experiencing something and having better things to substitute to help my energy go up versus just pumping myself full of sugar or pumping myself caffeine, which I was actually crashing after having caffeine and that's not supposed to happen. So um, that's overall all better. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because healing isn't linear. I think if you expect like this, you're just, it's not realistic because life isn't like that it's not as much as we want it to be um but you're gonna have stressful periods you're gonna have um like Brittany, you had a tooth infection um and had to take Mm -hmm. in the middle of all this which was like not ideal but because we did so much good legwork leading up to it like the recovery from that surgery has been so fantastic because you weren't starting from ground zero. Just think about if you had that surgery, like at the beginning when you had no good bacteria and it was like the prime environment for more bad bacteria to grow. Like it would have been a wreck. It would have been a wreck. So we're going to jump over to DNA. I love genetic testing. It's probably my favorite. And the reason is, is because I think there's a lot of good things that people can do for themselves. I think there are a lot of good supplements out there. I think there's a lot of good food and DNA gives us clarity on the individual. There's a lot of different DNA tests I can run um, and I choose them based on the specific needs of the person at the time. But I always run a DNA health test. Um, And that is because what I find here shows me how you're wired genetically, how those genes are being expressed at the current moment. And because genes don't go away, but they can be modified by your lifestyle factors. So it shows me how they're being expressed. And it leads me down a path to say, what the long term should look like for you. So what I mean by that is we will use supplementation to make changes. So when I said we need to take something to get that bad bacteria out of there, get that candida out of there, like those are temporary. She's not going to take those supplements forever. We're taking them for a specific time and a specific purpose to accomplish that goal. We accomplish that goal, we move on. You should never be on the same supplements for the rest of your life unless you have a genetic predisposition that shows that you need support in that specific area. So this is just a summary table here. But what this shows me is Brittany struggles in some areas genetically, Um, all of them perhaps, but the most of them are methylation, <laughs> detoxification, inflammation. She she yeah. wasn't given some great genes. <laughs> no, so she, no. <laughs> she can't control that, but she can yeah. control their expression. So when we're looking at things like cancer at mm-hmm. a young age, that's not common unless there's a huge genetic predisposition towards methylation, detoxification, inflammation, oxidative stress, like those are the things that make cancer happen if they're not working well. So when we look at her long term and we see like she has a lot of inflammation genetics, 
you know, we're like, okay, Brittany might be the person that long term she needs to do some sort of detox, low anti-inflammatory diet, like for a couple weeks a year or once every quarter. She's got to keep it in check because genetically it can get out of hand really fast. Um, we'll also look at methylation. Um, that's going to tell me Brittany really needs B vitamins and magnesium long term. Her body does not do well unless she gets them supplementally. And the way we give them to her really matters. Uh, so that that's what this leads me to. So it's like beginning with the end in mind um, is really important or else you're guessing and you're trying to hit a target. You don't know what you're trying to hit. My target is. We use supplements in a concentrated period for what we need to change. And then we just focus on supporting you genetically, um, what your body needs. So when we look at the genes specifically, um, the one I pointed out here is for gluten intolerance. She has um, the double gene there with three. So the more circles that are filled in, the more impact that gene is having in a negative way there. So she is somebody where I'm like, Brittany, gluten is not your friend. It is not your friend. You do not need it. It hates you. Um, and whereas other people, I'll get this test back. And like, maybe we left gluten out for a period of time because it can be inflammatory to people. Um, we leave it out for a period of time. I get this test back and like genetically they can handle gluten. Okay, well, let's start adding it back in at this point. Let's make sure the quality of gluten that you're having is good. Let's make sure you're not overindulging in gluten. Um, so the interpretation of this test helps people to determine long term dietary <laughs> needs, which I think is really important. Um, when we look on down, you can see there's some genetics around vitamin A and vitamin D. Um, what this tells me is that like Brittany needs vitamin D support long term. We're not doing everything at one <laughs> at one time. We have to like again, we're beginning with the end in mind. But long term, this is in the plan that like she needs vitamin D support. Her body does not actually produce vitamin D the way that it needs to. And if we connected what vitamin D does in the body and some hormone pathways, like you're going to see your genetics are going to impact your hormone pathways. And it's, it's pretty important for long term. Um, this yeah, is that. I was going to add in my vitamin D levels have always been low and I was taking the most amount of vitamin D supplement over the counter because that's what they kept just saying well just increase it just increase it to the point where I was still taking the max amount and the last time I had my vitamin D tested it was so low that they were saying you are one point away from having to get infusion so I would have to go get injections every month for vitamin D and no one could figure out why that was happening so this was such a eye-opening and i mean it just gave me so much relief like oh my gosh this is why that's happening this is such an i mean it's a simple fix like yeah i'm gonna have to do it for the rest of my life but at least i'm going to be ingesting something that's good for me and that i have a reason behind why it's happening versus just saying well we'll try this and it's not working. So we'll just keep bumping it up. We'll just keep bumping it up. I'm like, hey, if it's not working, why are we still doing it? So right. I just want to point that out. That was so, and from a genetic standpoint, like I started talking to my parents about it. Both of my parents have vitamin D deficiencies and they've had it their entire life. And I'm like, well, I wonder where that came from. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. And like, then you think about, well, why didn't that work for me? And that's where you look at the big picture. We have to fix your gut first for you to be able to absorb the vitamins <laughs> appropriately and use them. So that's why it's like you don't you don't try to like fix all this at one time. We have to really prioritize how we do it and make it very specific. Um, 
This MTHFR gene just says we struggle with methylation. Methylation is kind of like the key in the ignition that makes a lot of processes go in your body. We're going to circle back around to hormones and how that impacts her. But that also tells me that she needs methylated B vitamins long term. Um, if we look at her inflammation, uh, like I said, she has inflammatory genes, IL-6. Specifically, she's got the double, uh, double C's with the three circles. That is a very highly impactful gene for inflammation. It's connected with autoimmune dysfunction. It's connected with rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, not specifically just rheumatoid arthritis, but any autoimmune inflammatory disease there's a connection that we're finding in the research. So it's like, okay, like she was right. She told her doctors she what was going on. Um, and they're like, you're fine. But she knew something wasn't right. So that's where it's like, okay, we have to get the inflammation down. Like we have to keep it low. This is not somebody that can eat a ton of inflammatory type foods long term. That's why I suggested like a detox anti-inflammatory type diet, even if she cycles on and off of it just to keep things at bay. But she can modulate the expression of that gene, whether she has it or not. Um, when we look up at detoxification, she has some deletions there um, that has to do with glutathione. It's one of our major antioxidants in our body. Antioxidants are what put out inflammation. So they put out all the stress. They put out the fire. So that's why everybody's like, okay, free radicals lead to cancer and you need antioxidants. I'm like, that is a very simplified but true statement like you need glutathione and it's so important in her case because it connects with this Krebs cycle. So if we look back on like where some of the breakdown is over there on the right, there's a very fine print. It's probably hard to see on your little screen, but it says iron and then GSH. That stands for glutathione. You have to have glutathione to move from that green circle to that yellow circle and remain green. She doesn't have glutathione. She doesn't make it herself. So she needs support with glutathione. Um, so the way we, the way we so are starting to support her there is giving her liposomal glutathione that has methylated B vitamins in it. And liposomal vitamins are easily absorbable. They get in the bloodstream very quickly. And it's going to make a tremendous impact on that energy cycle and methylation. So this is huge. This, this picture can be very uh, intimidating. But I'm going to connect some dots here from what we were seeing. Um, there's... Pregnalone, that's your precursor to progesterone and how it's broken down. What we have done up to this point is like, think above pregnalone, we have hit all the roots that are <laughs> coming to this point. So this is just a snapshot of the hormonal breakdown. And we see how the hormones are broken down. When we break down hormones in our body, they have to be shuttled down different pathways to be used or gotten rid of. What we see with Brittany is that estrogen is super, super high. A lot of times when people have hormonal issues, they assume they have low estrogen which is not always the case. And if you do not know this information, you can make yourself so much worse, um, so much worse. So this is what I would say would be estrogen dominance. That means estrogen is higher than testosterone, is higher than progesterone. And because we always look at them in relationship with each other, not just in isolation. I don't care if you have a test <laughs> that says like, yeah, I tested my hormones and they're fine. I'll be like, okay, tell me more about that. What are, <laughs> they, they may be fine in isolation, what do the other ones look like? And when was that test taken? 
because I only take the Dutch plus test days 19 through 21 of your cycle. I'm not going to take it any other time because during that time we see this little ramp up of all three hormones. So you get an accurate picture of what your hormones actually are. If you test them at any other time, it's like you're going to be low, low, or you're going to be high, high. And we know this is like a good a good point to measure consistently and we know when you took it so if we need to retest we know when we took it we need to take it at the same point in the cycle so we see that estrogen is really high and then when i look at this for her i'm like okay we're definitely shuttling a lot down this blue pathway. We're shuttling some down the red pathway, and we are shuttling a lot down the green pathway. Just in simplicity, we want the green to be dominant, um, and we want hardly any red and blue. We'd like for it to be as little as possible as well. So with her, we've got a lot of blue, a lot of red, and those little numbers on top of the arrows are genes. They give us information about your genetics and how you're shuttling down things down a pathway. So what this shows me is she's shuttling a lot down this red pathway. And what it leads to, you see the little DNA symbol is DNA cell damage. So her estrogen dominance in relationship to her other hormones because estrogen doesn't cause cancer, it's the imbalance of them. Then in combination with some genetic predispositions, her lack of antioxidants, her lack of methylation, that's why we're going down that pathway. That's why we're going down DNA cell damage pathway. She has the capability to go down this step one a one uh, the green pathway. She has the capability to go down that pathway, but the circle that I put there is a comped gene, uh, which she has, which says she struggles with methylation. So it is slowed down. So we need to support that through magnesium genetically, because that's where that's where the breakdown is going to go. So you'll see those those connections there. We're going to connect it back to the gut. Because I also tested this intestinal health marker, beta-glucuronidase. Um, it may not mean much to you, but it means a whole lot to me when it's on that upper high level. If I'm seeing this in the stool, that tells me that there is a problem with how estrogen is being detoxified. It tells me that estrogen isn't getting out of the body appropriately and it's being reabsorbed into the bloodstream, which causes a lot of dominance and a lot of issues. So that's how that circles back around with the gut health. And then I know that in order for her to go down that green pathway, I need to support her comp gene. I need to support her methylation gene and I need to support her glutathione gene. Otherwise, that estrogen's not going anywhere. It's like a backed up pipe. <laughs> like we are not doing anything. We're just recirculating. We're causing inflammation and aggravation and we're going to cause cell DNA damage. So that's how we fit all that together. Her good genetics, I always like to say something good. You have the CYP1A1 pathway. You have the green pathway. So when we support those other pathways, we can literally stop cancer cells from forming because we shuttle the estrogen down the right pathway. It's huge. How does that make you feel, Brittany? It, I, I would say that it's just like the overall, and like, I feel like a lot of you guys will also agree with this is I had spent so much time and much money doing all the other tests with all of these other providers all of this time like months and months and months because you can't get into any specialty person within a week and nothing no one could come up with an answer other than like well let's we'll just put you on this and there was no rhyme or reason it was never specific and getting all of these tests done and seeing how each one of them was pointing to the same thing or same things just I mean, it gave me so much relief and so much empowerment with myself on how I now know that there 
are better days to come. I am going to be able to be healthy again. Um, and I feel, like I said, I feel like a totally new person already, but going back to what Shelly said at the beginning, I, I want to get into the, I don't want to stay in that normal range. I want to live a healthy lifestyle. and I want to make sure that I'm not developing these cancer cells. Obviously no one does. Um, but knowing that like I will have control and I have the help with Shelly and my other support systems, it just gives me hope. But just like overall, it just makes me very happy, very hopeful and just an ease of mind because you actually get answers. Like that is the biggest thing is you get these answers that make sense. They're not as big words. Obviously they're big words. I don't know all of this and I'm sure Shelly could explain them all, but you have an understanding to medical problems that you don't have understandings without these tests. And these tests aren't done all at the exact same time. Like she says, we, we tested a lot. I, we had to wait on my hormone one just to make sure that we were doing it because I didn't have a normal cycle. And now uh, we have been supporting this and doing this. I have been able to have regular cycles, which is great. Um, and I'm already seeing the benefits and we're not even halfway done. I wouldn't say like we were just starting a new part of my, of my change and it's already so much better. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, I think one day when we talked, you were like, Shelly, I think I actually like had libido for the first oh, time. Oh my gosh. Y'all. I could talk to you about that all. Mm, yes. I mean, being a 27, almost 28 year old, new Mary, like that was a huge thing. And that can obviously drive a wedge in between a relationship. And luckily I have a very supportive husband. I'm a women's health therapist. So like we talk about that stuff and he has understanding, but, um, I talked to her one day and I was like the first time since probably, I had all of this done in 2018 had I actually experienced some form of libido where I was like, I was the one initiating it, not just the other way around or, well, it's been a month. Like I probably should do this. Like it was actually me, my body saying, let's go do it. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> so, and like that has been, and I mean, obviously it's not still not perfect, but that was even before we even started addressing any the specifics of estrogen and getting down to my hormones that was still kind of carry over from the other stuff that we had been I said like this I know we're still towards the beginning you know it's a problem pro it's not a we're gonna give you well and then we're gonna be better better and I feel like that's the biggest difference working with functional wellness because you are making lifestyle changes and you have to put in effort, but Shelly's putting that much more effort into you. Like you are a person, not just number, not just another client. Like you saw all the information she did for me outside of just these tests where she wrote handwritten notes. Who does handwritten notes? Doctors don't. And so <laughs> you can see how she cares in the four month program continuation. She's always checking in um, us at communicating. I will get a message from her. I'll see it. And then I'm like, crap, four days later. Um, so she's really as invested with each one of her clients as she is with her own self, her family. I mean, she just loves what she does and she's great at it. That's never going to be, I mean, you don't get that from average care usually not saying all doctors not going to generalize all health care um because i'm part of health care but it is a big big difference oh thank you i love that i love that you felt like you had clarity when mm -hmm. you have clarity you actually have less fear like we know neurologically when we understand something we have less fear and less fear equals less stress and less stress equals happier hormones and happier gut health. So when I say I want to create clarity for people, what that really means to me is I want you to stop being scared. Like there's an answer 
there is an answer in here. We might have to dig for it. Some people I have to dig harder than others, but mm -hmm. there's an answer in there. Um, and when you understand it, there's like, okay, yeah. All right. We have the information. Let's work towards that. Then you have a goal and you know why you're doing what you're doing instead of just randomly taking all this stuff or Google searching everything and hoping that it works. And then when it doesn't, you move on to the next thing. I did it myself too before I got to this point. So I understand and I know how much time, energy and money I wasted prior to actually understanding what was going on in my body. And so like not knowing what's going on in your body causes that tremendous amount of stress. And when you're under stress for a very long period of time, what happens is we first go into fight or flight where we're like ramped up. And then we um, over time, we start to go into freeze or shut down or burnout mode. So this curve on Brittany is what I would call a burnout curve. This is where I would say her body needs support. We need to support her adrenal glands. There's a lot of stress. We can look at how she's metabolizing those stress hormones and she's struggling. So it when she says she's depressed, and this is where it's so important for Christian women to understand when you say you're depressed, but you're ashamed of your depression because you feel like you should have more faith or you feel like you should be happy all the time, there can be some physiological reasons you feel depressed. Um, this would be a curve that I would say, like, this is why you feel that way. <laughs> OK, we need to support that curve. You do you do the spiritual mental work like you. Yeah. Like, yes claim that you have joy in all circumstances like yes pray yes have gratitude um do not take an antidepressant please at this stage we need to lift your cortisol curve so that you're more in that stage where you feel like you have a little more get up and go and yeah. want to do and things I, yeah and i think right now it is very i mean at least on, on my side of like social media we hear oh these are the symptoms of high cortisol. If you feel this, this means you have high cortisol and it's all talking about high cortisol. And I didn't realize that a lot of symptoms for high cortisol can also be symptoms of low cortisol until I did this. So up until this point, I've always thought I have high cortisol. I, I'm always stressed out. I'm always doing this. I'm doing this. I am the definition of what causes high cortisol. So when I got this test, my mind was absolutely blown. I was, I'm doing all of these things and I'm like literally like downgrading my already low cortisol, which is why I think it's so, and, and Shelly touched on this before, but coming from an outside standpoint, it is so important to know the answers. These tests aren't, yeah, they're not free, but they give you so much information and give you a reason on why your body is feeling the way that it is. And we're not, you're not just guessing. You're not just saying, okay, well, Brittany, you're a stressed out person. Like you probably have high cortisol. So let me put you on these three supplements because these three supplements cure all high cortisol. If you would have given that to me, I would have literally been a vegetable. Like it would not have yes. been very good at all. And I think this is a testament on how important using this and why you use this um, with your clientele um, is so important because I would never have <laughs> ever had imagined that I had low cortisol in a million years. Yes. And that is why like, I'll run like that stress management workshop where we talk about these different types of stress to try to put you in a bucket more like, are you high? Are you low? But you never know until you actually test it. Like you really don't. And I have people that message me all the time and they're like, Shelly, what should I take in your e-store to, to lower my cortisol? And I'm like, I'm not telling you that because, and I, I'm honest, I'm like, I'm not telling you what you should take to lower your cortisol because I don't know if I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. Because and a lot of the tests that you might get, like I, I had a cortisol test done 
with my endocrinologist and it was just from the blood work um, and it was just at that one moment this cortisol test test you have to do it very specifically throughout your entire day so you could like in theory, if I went to a doctor, I'm going to be anxious because doctors, it's called the white coat syndrome. You get anxious going to doctors and you're experiencing all this stuff. Your blood pressure is elevated. Your heart rate's elevated. Your body is sending processes that are going to increase your cortisol. So I had normal cortisol probably because I was in a heightened state. So it kind of brought it to a normal area and then I crashed afterwards. So that is another thing with this one that I really liked was that cortisol changes throughout the day. It's supposed to change throughout the day. That's how we get energy and that's how we go to bed. And so this really manages that entire day versus just one spot of your entire day. So yes. I also want to point that out because it was great. <laughs> Yes, it's so huge that you get an accurate representation and then you know how to support yourself at different points in the day. Like, I'm like, okay, Brittany, like, where should we be exercising? Where should we have some adrenal supplement or mushroom drink or something to to boost like middle of the day? Um what do we need to do at night? Like some people will spike up at night and that's going to interfere with your sleep. So what do we need to do at Sweet. night? We were thinking the all the time. time. Yeah. That was the only time I ever had energy was right. And it was, I knew it right at nine o'clock every single night. I was like, well, now I'm wide awake. I mean, I went from being like, uh, all day long and then nine o'clock and oh gosh, my husband, he was just like, why do you have so much energy? And I was like, I don't know. Like I just, <laughs> It was because of that. And it showed right there. I have the only spot that I have is right that's at a normal. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, it's normal. <laughs> we'll think when your morning gets within normal limits, how much energy you'll have. <laughs> so, like, just when we're looking at this, again, we're trying to connect the dots between that Krebs cycle and energy and adrenal fatigue and making sure that we're getting those processes going and making sure that we're balancing out that bacteria. And we're always thinking about in the perspective of the brain gut connection, how you're thinking, um, your gratitude, your mindset, what you're putting in your body, how it's influencing your gut. All of it goes full circle and you can either get stuck in a feedback loop that is positive or you can get stuck in a feedback loop that is negative. And that's why you can't just treat one. You can't just treat the brain. You can't just treat the gut. You have to treat both. So in Brittany's case, it's like down, regulate the nervous system, heal the gut, down, regulate the nervous system, heal the gut. Like we have to do both of those things simultaneously to be able to get the progress that we want to get. And the outcome is like, we get vision, we get re purpose renewed. Like she wants to go back to school and do things that she didn't think that she would be able to do. And we're not even done yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Brittany, is, is there anything else you want to add about your recovery or about the process about our treatments our plans i would just say like i mean like at the beginning like this has been just a huge difference i said from the beginning i was not getting anywhere and like already getting somewhere is so great um if you do choose to do the program it is going to seem overwhelming but it is so great because you have people, other clients that are there to encourage you. You're always looking at different little goals, little wins, um, getting all of this information that you can use for the rest of your life um, that will, one, educate you on your body. And I think empowerment over your own body is such a powerful thing, especially in women. Um, and you will learn so much about that. Um, and it it is a little costly. And I know that's a big kind of pushback on you're like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. Um, but I know Shelly has 
done stuff where you can do payment plans now. You can use your HSA accounts. Um, and I, I just always think back, like, how much money did I spend on all of this blood work, all of these MRIs, all of this other stuff? And I got no answers. And that was a four year process. Whereas right now I'm not even a year in yet, I guess. I think it'll be a year in like June. Um, and I'm already seeing so much. And I know that even when I don't have to have that monthly meeting with Shelly, because I am doing so well, one, I know I can always contact her and ask her stuff or maybe even rejoin for just for a little bit of extra um push um but i will have what she has taught me to carry on and to have that autonomy over myself knowing that i have all of these tools to progress myself um when i am done with this specific portion of the program. Um, but I would not have changed anything. I really wish I would have done it sooner. If I would have known about it sooner slash, you know, Shelly also probably, I was one of her first ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is one of those investments where if, I mean, if you saw a family member going through it, you would want them to invest in themselves. And that's what I look at. Like I want to invest in myself and care about myself just like Jesus cares about me, just like he intends us to live our lives. I don't want to live behind the screen of depression and fear. I want to be able to live in the way that he wants me to live. So I just, I, I just, if you can make it work, it, you will not, you will not be disappointed. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think you just always have to remember why, like, why, why would you do this? Why would you take all of your energy and your resources and try to make some of these hard changes? And when you know why you want to feel better, like I want to feel better so that I can play with my grandkids or I want to feel better so that I can actually think outside of my own brain and focus on other people. I want to feel better so I can do something that I feel like God's called me to do that. I don't feel like my body's letting me do. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe there is spiritual warfare with some of this health stuff that's going on with women and stress and like Satan wants to keep us unwell and distracted and unable to fulfill our purposes. And while, you know, there's a theological tension there on suffering and health and all this, like God can definitely use it and redeem it. There's so many times where I see Christian women immobilized and unable to do things that they know God has called them to do because their health is so severe and they have no answers and they are trapped in fear and trapped without hope. And that is not God's character. That is not where he wants you. Um, so I just encourage you Um I always think about this scripture. It's kind of been something that I that I meditate on in First Peter. Be well balanced and always alert, because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion, looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him. Resist his evil attacks with strong, vigorous faith. And then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. I am, I am not able to heal you. I never promise anybody I can heal you. I know the one that can. I know that God can heal you. He can heal you like that if he wants to. Just in an instant, I believe he can. I believe that also he has, um, he's unveiling some things within our medical community that are allowing people to have resources <laughs> to be able to heal um, discoveries, getting back to his grand design, showing his people that he like he has created you this way to heal. We just haven't always been able to tap into it. Um, 
So just know that it all, it all has to point back to him. It all has to, um, no matter what you're doing or what stage that you're in. But, um, like Brittany said, I generally work with people starting out in a four month program where we get really in depth on your diet, your lifestyle, how you're eating, how you're sleeping, how you're exercising, um, getting in depth into these labs, making a plan, making sure that you know what's going on in your body and what you need to do moving forward. And after that, I do promise that you have clarity and I do promise that you have direction. Um, And that is where the hope comes in and where the transformation comes in. And moving forward, you know how to best care for your temple. Um, and do it without fear. So if you want to learn more about what I do, um, I do set up discovery calls where we chat a little bit about what's going on with you and a little bit about what I do. And just know that that's a time where I make sure it's a good fit for both people. Um, What Brittany has told you that she's had to do isn't easy. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. Like you have to be resourceful Uh, You have to be coachable. You have to be willing to make some hard changes. So during that call, I always just make sure we're both on the same page. I don't want to just like sign up a client and then you fail because you weren't ready to do it. Like that is not my intention. I want you to succeed. I want you to be able to improve upon that wherever you are on that health spectrum and move towards optimal and and actually get there. So that is why I do it this way. Um, like I said, you can always message me additional questions. You can click the link in my bio. That, that link's also there to book a discovery call. Um, but I just want to thank Brittany, first of all, for being transparent and opening up her story. Obviously, she's passionate about it because she has seen the change And I just so appreciate her being able to step out and say, like, I want to share this with people so that they know it's an option, too. Um, So thank you for doing that. Um, And then I just want to pray over whoever's listening. Um, Dear Lord, we just thank you today for this time that Brittany and I've had. Thank you for sending her into my path the way that you have, Lord, and for her friendship and for her motivation and her encouragement, Lord. I just, I'm so blessed by her. Um, Lord, I just pray that moving forward that you will just um, be with whoever's listening in whatever capacity they need. Give them wisdom moving forward. Give them direction. Give them hope. Give them peace. Lord, help them to see that you are good no matter what their circumstances are right now, that you can redeem any of their pain, Lord, if they draw close to you, God. You can you can do magnificent and fantastic things through their suffering and great things through their progress, Lord. We just know that um, you're present here today. Um, I pray that you will just help me moving forward, um, send the right people into my path that need my help at the right time, Lord, and let it just be of you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, you will get a recording of this in your inbox. Thank you again, Brittany. And um, shoot any questions my way. I'll talk to you all soon.